Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines from our city, our state, our country. We take a look at things that we know and want to know about Puerto Vallarta, and we put it all together to try to have an awesome life here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals, English-speaking locals, English-speaking locals. That's what it is. And I have to tell you something. I never not enjoy putting the broadcast together. I always enjoy putting the broadcast together. But then there are those days in which I will have a crazy idea that gets me all giddy. And this is one of those broadcasts. Why? Because today we are going to domesticate a wild thing live here on the broadcast. Yes. Yes, but I don't want to keep you in suspense. I'm going to cut to the chase because we're not going to do this until after the news. I am just going to cut to the chase and tell you what we're up to because there's going to be a poll involved. And then we'll go through the news and all that usual chingadera that we always do. But the question for you today is, <clears throat> and here's the wild thing, have you ever peeled a prickly pear? That is the question for today. So just answer that question, um, and we'll take a look at just how experienced you are at the fine art of domesticating a prickly pear. And, um, and then I'll get a sense as to whether you are really locals or not locals, or maybe you think you are locals. And then we'll look at the results. Oh, my God. See, I knew it. You don't have experience peeling your own prickly pears. So today... For the first time here at Coffee and Headlines, never done before, we're going to have a live demonstration on how to domesticate a freaking prickly pear. So there. Um, yes, yes, that's what we're going to do. I know I'm all excited. I can't wait. So we might as well get through the freaking news first. But um, let me do the usual uh, diligence. And what uh, we do is... We talk about all these beautiful things. If you are new, you can let us know that you are new by writing the word new in um, in, in your comment. That way we'll give you a nice little welcome and maybe a prickly pear. And if you have something truly important that you want to bring up during the broadcast, if you add a cue at the beginning of your comment, you increase the chances that we'll actually notice it during the chit-chat section and we'll be able to address your concern or your question. So that is what we do. And here we go. And I love it because Maggie as and Peggy had said yesterday, oh, I love surprises. And now she's saying, oh, fun, which means this is going to be a lot of fun. And I also see some experts here because um, I see some comment from the people that have done it. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. We'll get to the comments later on. First, let's dive into the news because we have some interesting things to talk about. Boom. Boom. 
Good news, the national COVID-19 stoplight indicator has been updated, and while we find our state in the same yellow color, there are good news all around because there are no longer states in the red, and only Baja California Norte is in the orange after having been in the yellow in the previous update. So even if we don't did not change colors, this is still very, very good news. In uh, related news, federal authorities have indicated that they've updated the COVID-19 pre-registration website to allow folks between 12 and 17 years of age with comorbidity to register for the vaccine. No specific dates have been made available as to when the vaccines will be available to minors, but I imagine that per registration will give the federal government a clearer picture of just how many minors in the country meet this criteria. Mayor Luis Alberto Michel continues uh, without naming specific individuals that will be part of his cabinet with few uh, with a few notable exceptions. We now have a name for the general secretary, and that'll be Felipe Rocha Flores. Uh, Manuel Palafox Castillo will be in charge of municipal finances, and uh, Commissary Luis Fernando Munoz Ortega will oversee the police department. I don't know much about these individuals, but at least we know the names of the people that are going to be in charge. All other dependencies will be handled by office managers and potential cabinet members, that is, those individuals that may become the directors of all the different dependencies, will be under some sort of secret trial period, that is, secret to the potential cabinet members. And Mayor Michel will make final decisions within the next month to month and a half. Um, all I can say is the new administration came to innovate, or so they say, so let this be some sort of uh, strange innovation, or at least that's what I hope. Um, moving right along, Mexico's religious front has been busy nationwide preparing a protest against abortion. This protest will take place tomorrow, and Puerto Vallarta will be included in the manifestation. The goal of the march is to prevent abortion from being decriminalized, although this has already happened, but what do I know? Those interested in protesting abortion can meet at 10 a.m. in the morning at Parque Hidalgo tomorrow morning to join a march that will end at City Hall. This is supposed to be a peaceful demonstration. Those who do not feel the need to protest against abortion can enjoy the day differently. And with all that said, let us see how the weather is going to help us enjoy our weekend in whatever way we choose to enjoy our weekend. Play Squid Games, win Squid Prices, says Snarky Carrot Weather. I think there's a new series on uh, Netflix called The Squid Games or something to that effect. Um but I don't know much about it. What I do know is that according to our weather forecast, we are uh, enjoying 27 degrees right now. Uh, it feels like 31. Humidity is not bad. It's only, only 87%. And for those of you who deal in uh, Fahrenheit currency, you have 81 degrees to spend for the rest of the day, or at least at this moment. Our forecast for today calls for a humid and partly cloudy day with a high temperature of 33. Low temperature of 24. Tomorrow, Sunday, we can expect a humid and mostly cloudy day with a high temperature of 32, low temperature of 24, and we will begin our week on Monday with rain in the evening and overnight with a high temperature of 32 and a low temperature of 23. That's not bad at all. Now, moving on to a couple of leisurely... Uh, Yes, leisurely headlines that I have for you. Mexico's Consumer Protection Agency, or Profeco, thinks you can and should kiss instant soup goodbye. Profeco found that instant soups have a very high sodium and calorie content without enough nutritional balance. This after the agency conducted a large number of tests involving 33 different brands and found, among other things, that Maruchan or Maruchan, whichever way you say it, uh, that, that this brand of soup causes headache and tachycardia. Um, 
Profeco uh, has a consumer magazine, a monthly consumer magazine, and they're expected to publish the study within the week and make actual recommendations of brands that should be removed from the market. Ah, good news in the department of wanting to get away from it all, or at least from Puerto Vallarta. TAR did it again. The regional airline that had just announced direct flights between Puerto Vallarta and Hermosillo has now announced another direct flight, this time between Puerto Vallarta and La Paz in Baja California, opening all kinds of opportunities to explore beaches and destinations in the Baja Peninsula for those of us that live here. And it's not that expensive. The one-way flight is 1,299 pesos uh, with all taxes included. And this, this, this just makes me so very happy. There is a God and she enjoys opera. Yesterday afternoon, I almost fell off my chair when I saw that my friend Maria Luisa, Maria Luisa Melendres, who works at Conjunto Santander in Guadalajara, announced that Conjunto Santander will be broadcasting the Met moving forward and not Teatro Diana. Conjunto Santander has not updated their website just yet, but I am itchy and I am ready and I am just so giddy I can't stand myself. Um, finally, before we um, address the prickly pear and domesticate it, I will leave you a link in the show notes to this fabulous free jazz concert that Lady Gaga put out. She knows how to pick her friends, and she has just released a brand new album with duets, jazz duets with the one and only Tony Bennett. I watched a little bit of the, of the concert. It was published a couple of days ago, and it looks absolutely wonderful. What a creative, versatile, multi-talented gal she is. So, so there you have it. And now... Now we are going to domesticate a prickly pear. But I have to show you first, or I have to tell you first how this idea came about. I went to the supermarket the other day to buy my batch of Erdes salsas that I had just discussed. I had said earlier this week that I needed to do shopping. And I got to the produce section at La Comer, and there they were. There they were, tons and tons of prickly pears just waiting to be domesticated and loved. Uh, oh my goodness, Pat Humphrey decided to get academic and says prickly pear, a.k.a. cactus fruit, cactus pears, opuntia, cactus fig, and even Mexican tuna fruit, my favorite nomenclate, no, nomen, whatever. Well, don't we love quoting uh, the internet? I love it. I love my cut and paste. Anyhow. Sitting next to the prickly pears was one of these. And you are probably wondering, well, it's just a fucking fruit. Why do they do that? Well, prickly pears, although you cannot see it. Here's a prickly pear, by the way, in case you don't even know what we're talking about. And if you don't even know what we're talking about, well, you won't sleep well for a day or two. Um, these are prickly pears. They grow out of cactus trees and they are absolutely wonderful. And we hold them with something because they have nearly invisible little pricks that if you, if you grab the fruit with your own hand, the prick will, the, the spines will, will prick you. They will not hurt, but they'll make you feel all itchy. So how on earth do you eat these things that we see everywhere on the street? They sell them in little plastic containers, but they're already peeled. And why would you want to eat them? Well, because they're fabulously delicious. They're nutritious. They're low in calories and, and, and very high in refreshing liquid. So what we're going to do is, oh, I'm so excited because I've never done this before and I have no idea if it's going to work or not because I decided to borrow Luna's camera and check this out. Are you ready? There you go. We are going to pretend we're Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray, get out of the fucking way. So let me move my microphone a little bit. And in fact, do, need, do we need one of these? Um, hold on just a second. I don't even know that I can invoke it. Okay, you're going to have to deal with my voice. And notice that I have a plastic bag here because you see, once you bring the, pr the prickly pears home, they're easier to handle if you have a 
plastic bag because this way you prevent yourself from getting pricked and you know we like pricks but not this kind anyhow the first thing you want to do is you want to let me turn that silly music down a little bit there you go so the first thing you want to do is you want to get rid of the edges mind you there's no one at the supermarket to tell you whether these are ripe or not. So I need to trust that if the, if the supermarket puts them out or if you find them for sale at a market, that means they must be ripe. And if they're not, we're going to find out shortly. So what I'm doing now is I'm removing both sides. And this, my friends, this reveals the fruit on both sides, okay? So far, so good. So now what you do is you take a serrated knife and you cut a longitudinal slice into the fruit. This is about a quarter of an inch that I'm cutting into the fruit. And what you do to open them is, you know, I'm holding it with this plastic bag. And what you do is with the plastic itself, I'm gonna to try to show this as clearly as I can, is you peel is this showing? Yes, it is. See, you peel the prickly pear and the peel just comes off without any problem. And you keep going around and I'm covering the view with plastic. Now the fruit is perfectly fine. You can touch the fruit without a problem. And, and there it is. It's that simple. So now we get rid of this. We don't need the, the peel anymore. Goodbye peel. And you can do several things with the fruit. You can just poke it with a fork and lift it as though it was some kind of popsicle. Or you can cut little slices and you can enjoy your prickly pear. Now, something you should know about prickly pears is they have all these seeds inside. And a lot of people are wondering, ew, do we eat the seeds? And the answer is, I do. I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if this is ready for consumption. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It is so sweet and delicious. It's not even funny. No. Hold on. Ah, coffee and prickly pears. Mm -hmm. Now you're probably wondering, well, what the hell happened to all the seeds? Well, you see, you don't actually chew. You just kind of massage the fruit with your teeth so that the fruit will dissolve enough that you can actually enjoy the flavor and swallow it. And the, the, the seeds come along for the journey. I mean, you don't actually strain the fruit or anything. You swallow the seeds. Is it bad for you? Well, if you eat half a dozen of these things, and you can very easily do that because they are so fabulously delicious, you could end up constipated. This, the, the seeds in the prickly pear will actually make you constipated. But eating them is as simple as that, and, and, and cutting them is not complicated. You don't even have to use the plastic bag. You may feel your fingers a little itchy, um, but, um, but it, they're, they're yummy. They're yummy, and it just just pains me to see them at the supermarket and to appreciate that a lot of people may not be eating them because a lot of people don't know how to do it. And looking at your experience with prickly pear, I see that 85% of you have not ever peeled your own prickly pear. But did you see how easy that was? You could easily become more of a local to... Uh, buy, rather not two, but buy, eating your own prickly pear and buying them at the supermarket and peeling them and enjoying them. They are absolutely delicious. And that is the end of that. <laughs> Rachel Ray, eat me. Rachel Ray. One of these days, I'm going to show you the YouTube video of Mexican mothers responding to Rachel Ray's recipe for pozole. It's actually quite hysterical. But we're not going to go there today. We're going to take a look at your comments, and we are going to take it from there. I certainly hope you enjoyed it because I had a ball putting it together. <laughs>
Ah, uh, <clears throat> good morning and more good mornings and more good mornings from all over the place, from beautiful San Antonio to beautiful Lake Chapala to Chicago to El Cerro. It's always great to see you guys. Uh, let's see. Oh, the sunny sandbar in the middle of the Mai Sai Sai Pai. Don't you start correcting me. I'm being silly. The Mississippi River. Four weeks and one day until we arrive in Puerto Vallarta. Dan and Kathy, I can't wait for you guys to come back. Um, oh, I always love it when you guys connect with some of the places we recommend. Dory, I am so happy to hear that you enjoyed Mezcalizal. I've been twice. I haven't been back, but I have been twice. Julie says, isn't it nice that mornings are getting cooler? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am now covering myself with a sheet again while I'm sleeping, which is a good thing. Um, Mazel tov, Jonathan, who finally catches us live from Minnesota, will be spending my ninth winter in Puerto Vallarta from January 1 to March 31st. May you behave as a traveler and not as a tourist. Yay. Uh, let's see. Matthew uses a paper napkin for peeling tunas. That goes as well. That's a good suggestion. Uh, Sue obviously had experienced. I saw this, this comment earlier on, but you know, you may not have uh, gloves handy. I like using the same plastic bags that I buy the fruit from. So, so there you have it. Uh, Mark is local, just in the crazy meaning. Fair enough. Nothing hold it, nothing held against you. Um, <laughs> Oh, you're my kind of gal, Cindy. Cindy may have peeled a few pricks. I may have peeled a few pricks myself, um, but I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not one to brag about those things. Uh, and Javier starts singing. Me voy a comer esa tuna aunque me espine la mano. I love it. Um, Ramona asks Paco, "Is there something I can bring you when I come next month?" Um, Bring me, bring, bring me a safe journey. Bring me a good plane ride. Bring me, don't bring me anything, Ramona. I'm good. Thank God. Uh, thank you for asking. Just bring yourself safely home to Puerto Vallarta and we will, we'll, we will be, we'll, we'll be so happy to know that you made it fine. There's another new person, new Denise and Christopher. That will be Denistopher. Uh, from Las Vegas, first time, first time live on Facebook, planning our permanent move to our favorite city. We love you, Paco. Well, I don't love you because I don't know you, but I'm sure I will love you if you stick around, Denise and Christopher, uh, now known as uh, Denistopher. If you guys tune in regularly, you know, there's always all kinds of questions that people that are moving down here permanently have. And we, we love those kinds of questions because we want you to move to Puerto Vallarta permanently with a, as best a knowledge of how we live our daily lives and as few as possible unreasonable or unreal or lofty expectations fed to you by some of us unfortunately we want you to have a faith a, a safe and wonderful transition so stick around come back whenever you want um let's see La -da -dee -da -da. um Mihal says, I'm late, late, late. Paco says, I miss you, miss you, miss you. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you guys get snarky and I love it. I've come across a few prickly pears at the club. I hear you, John. I hear you. Uh, and yes, it is terrible to have invisible pricks. Oh my God, you guys are totally all over the place. I love it. Um, this is very true. Tunas probably have more water in them than watermelons. Yes. Uh, what do they taste like? And don't say chicken. No, they don't taste like chicken. What are you talking about? Uh, tunas are, are prickly pears are really flavorful fruits. I love them. Um, <laughs> small, nearly invisible pricks. I've seen that movie before. Please let me know if it's on Netflix. I want to watch it again. Um, have I ever done a feature on Guadalupe Victoria near the convention center? If you are referring to the Colonia, 
Colonia Guadalupe Victoria is not on our list yet because I'm not particularly familiar with that colonia. We started with a list of 20-something colonias that I happen to be particular uh, that I particularly happen to be familiar with, and uh, and we're going to tackle all those, and then we're going to start looking at other colonias in the city that I may not be as familiar with. Uh, but we haven't gotten to Guadalupe Victoria just yet, Jonathan. Hopefully, we will at some point. Um, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Karen hasn't mastered the mango fork. And, and now you have a new challenge. This is easy. And the mango fork is easy. All it takes is practice. Good comment. I thought tunas were bright pink. You see, tunas inside are different colors, Colleen, because there are different species or, or varieties of prickly pears or tunas. I happen to like the green ones. And these, thank goodness, are very, very easy to find here. Uh, but the other ones are also sweet and wonderful. They just have a slightly different flavor. Um, lots of fiber in those prickly pears. This is true. Um, and this is also true. You put salt and lime and they are great. I personally like them just plain, but I have had them with a little bit of salt and lime juice and they are absolutely wonderful. Um, I knew this would come. How do we know if it's ripe for purchasing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, if La Comer puts them out, I have to assume that they're ripe and ready to eat. Tunas don't go bad easily. Like, for example, I bought these at the supermarket two days ago, and they've been in my refrigerator since. And I've never bought a tuna that went bad. That said, I never bought a tuna uh, to keep it in the house forever. I mean, I buy them and, and, uh, and, uh, and eat them immediately because I love them very very much now here's something i would love prickly pear margaritas i don't know who has them uh but uh suzanne if you have a specific place where you've enjoyed one and this place happens to be here in puerto vallarta please share the tip with us so that we can go there as well uh clearly somebody has seen rachel ray's pozole video yes that was not pretty uh and Here's another comment to that effect. I will find it and I will bring the link to the next broadcast. Um, let's see what else we have. Do -de -do 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 -do. <laughs> Darn, missed the prickly pear part. Uh, someone at my door looking at a piece of furniture. Well, you can always rewatch it, Chris. That's the beautiful thing about storing these things on Facebook. Uh, you can watch them as many times as you want. Uh, that color looks great on you. Is it your favorite? No, I went to the wonderful t-shirt store that I've been going to, to Optima, and these were on sale for 60 pesos, that's less than $3. So I bought a ton of them. Um, and it, they feel comfortable. Um, oh, this is, this is very interesting and very important to know. The dark blue pitayas, which is another one of those fruits, uh, those wild fruits will cause permanent stain if they drip on white clothes. This is very, very, very true. Uh, Puerto Vallarta has little cities within Puerto Vallarta. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are a lot of communities within Puerto Vallarta and there are a lot of neighborhoods within Puerto Vallarta. And as much as we try to be as respectful of everybody's comfort zone, uh, and comfort level. When I meet people that have been coming to Puerto Vallarta for weeks or months and and they have yet to leave uh, uh, Emiliano Zapata or, 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 you know, that kind of thing. You know, when I run into people that say, oh, I've lived here for 30 years, but I've never gone to Pitillal, I think to myself, well, you know, if that's what makes you happy, um, that's that's fine. Who am I to criticize? But but the, yes, Mary, there are a lot of little cities and little communities and little niches within the city that are just ready for exploration. And uh, and I think that's one of the beautiful places of living anywhere you go. Where is Optima? Asks Cindy. Well, Optima has two stores. One of them is located at Macro Plaza right next to Walmart. And the other one is on Juarez Street, 
a couple of um, of blocks away, not even a couple of blocks away from City Hall. And they're a Mexican manufacturer of shirts and T-shirts. And I get a lot of very inexpensive T-shirts there. And um, and I love them. I love them. That's that's what I usually wear for for the broadcast. OK, so that was it. I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you were enlightened, amused, um, inspired to try something new. I hope that next time you go to the supermarket or to the Tianguis or the Mercado or wherever you shop for your produce, if you spot a prickly pear, you will not be afraid of enjoying them. And as always, I hope that if you've learned something new, if you laughed, if you were amused, if we piqued your curiosity, if you made you if we made you think about something important or something unimportant, I certainly hope that you'll keep copy and headlines in mind. We have memberships. We enjoy contributions uh, by way of buying coffee. And this goes a long way for me to be able to buy Luna cat food and buy me more prickly pears to demonstrate. Tomorrow is Sunday. It's my day off, and I hope you will have a day off as well. So between now and the next time we get together, please stay kind, stay happy, stay exploring, increase your comfort level here in the city. Try something you've never done before. Um, I continue to love and learn new things here in Puerto Vallarta, even after 20 years of living here, and I think that's a good way to live, or at least it's worked fine for me. It's made me a little chubby, but now I'm rambling. So I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you Monday or sometime soon. Take care.